so now see i am finding one by one right step by step we got this formula we've understood how this formula is actually written here now we found how to find out the epsilon 1 also but to find out the epsilon 1 we need this fst es we know d we know small d we know x we know x also we do not know right x is nothing but my uh you can say neutral axis depth so i would write it here i would write it here to find epsilon 1 we need see we can uh, this steps you can write anywhere right uh, upper niche doesn't matter but just we need to get all the you can say values or you can say all the uh, uh, terms that that is required to find out the thing so we need to get fst and x x is nothing but my epsilon one i mean sorry uh, neutral axis depth correct so now now to find these things what we will use okay what we will use we will use the conventional crack section analysis uh, uh, using the modular ratio i mean when we'll be using i mean when we'll be doing the design as per working stress method we use this uh, as a conventional approach of using modular modular ratio right so using that only we will find out the crack width i mean sorry fst and uh, neutral axis depth okay that is the easier easier way so uh, what we will use that to find these sorry find these we will use why i am writing so that when you refer later you will understand easily okay so we will use conventional crack section analysis okay with modular ratio fine so we'll use this conventional method of find uh, i guess the finding the i mean analyzing the crack section using the modular ratio so what was the formula for modular ratio all of you must know so modular ratio as per is profile 6 if you see modular ratio equal to 280 by 3 sigma cbc right 280 by 3 sigma cbc so if i just show you where it is if i just go to uh, i think page 81 yeah here if you see so here in the structural design working stress method you will find the modular ratio m has the uh, value 280 by 3 sigma cbc right uh, th sigma cbc is the permissible composite stress due to bending in concrete in newton per mm square which is specified in this table number 21 okay this table number 21 has given this uh, values of uh, c three sig i mean sigma cbc correct so this is my modular ratio m why i need this modular ratio i will just show you now so uh we know from this uh you can say uh working stress method of uh, section analysis we know so we know so the i mean not analysis i should say that in the approach of designing the section as per working stress method so we use some approach right so uh, if you are using the same approach here so just one thing i will write this is a different thing actually m by i is equal to sigma by y we all know that now what is this m what is this i that is also a matter m is nothing but the moment i is nothing but the moment of inertia sigma is nothing but the stress right and y is nothing but what is this y that i will tell you now okay what is this y that i will tell you now? So I'll just draw the section here. I will just draw the section here. Okay, and I will draw the suppose neutral axis depth. Okay. Here is my reinforcement. Here is my reinforcement. Now if I just draw the the same drawing, I will make it here. 
so the effective depth this is my effective depth d correct this is my neutral axis depth x fine and this is how much then it will be d minus x right d minus x correct so if i just draw the stress diagram here if i draw the stress diagram here it will be something like this it will be something like this it will be fc here it will be if we write it in terms of modulo ratio modulo ratio so it will be fst by m right so it is the strain in steel actually okay it is not now we are not talking about the reinforcement here Are sorry the concrete here it is the strain in steel because we are finding out this particular level okay at a, at a depth of small d from the compression phase correct so the strain is uh, uh, fst by m in terms of modular ratio of rate, right so this depth is nothing but my this depth is nothing but my d minus x and this is the depth this is the depth which we call it y so this is actually y okay so from the neutral axis the uh, i mean where we are finding out the stress okay uh, sorry so where are you finding out the strain in the, in the particular section so this is my y that depth is my y so this is equal to d minus x so we will replace y as d minus x now here here as we are using the working stress method of design so i mean uh, not working stress method of design for finding out the i mean uh, uh, fst and x neutral axis we are using that conventional approach so in this case this moment it will be serviceability moment right serviceability moment and we are trying to find out the crack section i mean we are trying to do the crack section analysis right so this moment of inertia it will be i cracked right the moment of inertia of the section when it is cracked okay so it will be it will be equal to it will be equal to how will you finding out it will be equal to how much this sigma it is nothing but the strain uh, strain in the steel here so it is nothing but fst by m and divided by y is nothing but d minus x okay it is nothing but d minus x correct okay so what we need to find out finally we need to find out the fst so how will you finding out so fst equal to fst equal to how how much it will be see this m will come down here so it will be m multiplied by multiplied by serviceability moment m service multiplied by small d minus x correct divided by icr correct mo uh, moment of inertia of the section right so we got the formula i mean we have derived the formula to find out the fst train in steel right correct so so one more thing what we need to find out the neutral axis depth right the depth of neutral axis so it is the very easy thing depth of neutral axis we all know depth of neutral axis we all know uh, how we will be finding out depth of neutral axis is nothing but uh, x equal to k into d we know and what is the formula for k k is equal to root under root under 2 rho m plus rho m square minus rho m and what is this rho rho is nothing but the reinforcement ratio rho is equal to ast by b into d correct what is b i have just forgot to write it here so i think earlier i have mentioned already b is nothing but the width of the section b is nothing but the width of the section correct so from here we got the neutral axis depth so x equal to x equal to 2 rho m plus rho m square minus is, this is out of this uh, you can say under root okay rho m this multiplied by d so we got the neutral axis depth also here so rho this ast value we know i mean whatever reinforcement we will be providing this is my ast correct 
whatever the enforcement will be providing correct okay so now now we got uh, x value we got uh, moment of uh, this is from the analysis this we will find out from the analysis so i will just write it from analysis moment of this is this already we know modular ratio correct now this is my unknown here to find out the fst we had two unknowns fst and x now uh, uh, i can say x we already got now fst also we got but we the unknown is icr okay i mean the correct moment of inertia of the section right so now now if we just see what we consider what we consider in we consider that this is my uh, i mean if we talk about the working stress method so what we consider this is my uh, uh, concrete section and when it is subjected to bending suppose from the upward so the bottom fibers are subjected to tension and the upper fibers are subjected to compression right so this is under compression this is under compression which is taken by the concrete because concrete is good enough to take uh, compression and here we provide reinforcement and we assume that this reinforcement will take all the uh, tension i mean we design such a way that this reinforcement will take the all the tension just coming in this section and this section is this concrete in this area is null to to contribute in the uh, tension resistance okay so when this section is under i mean what we consider that this has some area so as as this we are considering that this reinforcement will take all the tensions so we consider some transformed area of steel because here concrete is also there steel also there but we are not taking the action or not taking the uh, i mean tension capacity of the concrete so what we are considering we are considering this tension will be taken by the reinforcement itself but there is some few i mean some amount of tension that will be taken by the concrete so ignoring that we take a transformed steel area i mean we consider that this is my steel area obviously with the provided reinforcement so it will be so earlier it was ast here it was ast if you see so we consider a transformed steel area i would say transformed area of steel equal to modular ratio multiplied by ast because some amount of i mean resistance can be provided by the concrete also but as we are saying that concrete will take no tension so we here to compensate that we say say that there will be a uh, i mean there will be a transformed area of the reinforcement and it is nothing not ast it is actually modular ratio multiplied by ast okay so that area is the area we are getting so now now to find out the correct moment of inertia we have two sections one is this section which is taking con all compression and one is this section i mean so i should not say this section one is this section actually which is taking tension okay and if we add the moment of inertia of these two sections then only we will get the correct moment of inertia of the concrete right so now now if we find out the correct moment of inertia so uh, we can say that the correct moment of inertia icr let me just draw some uh, i mean diagram here first this is my beam okay this is my beam this is the neutral axis this is the transformed area of steel i would write okay fine this is the concrete area which is taking the compression so now first of all let us see this one i will just write it the moment of inertia crack moment of inertia of the section is equal to this is my neutral axis so moment of inertia of this section which is taking compression about the neutral axis 
okay so it is how much see this is my b this is my b and this is my x right the neutral axis i mean sorry the neutral axis depth correct and this is my suppose xx which is the neutral axis of the upper part only so with respect to the neutral axis of the section if you find out the moment of inertia so it will be bx cube bx cube by 12 okay then how much as it is not at the neutral axis so we need to use that uh, what we need to do the area multiplied by h square a h square right so bx cube by 12 plus what is the area so area is b into x so b into x into h square what is this h here h is nothing but my uh, a into h square right correct what is this h here so h is nothing but the neutral axis of this section from the actual neutral axis so this is my i just write this is nothing but my x by 2 correct so this is my h here from the neutral axis of the section to the neutral axis or you can say the center uh, or neutral axis i would say from of the particular area that we are finding out the moment right so b uh, i mean this is my area into h square h is nothing but x by 2 whole square correct so you got the moment of inertia of the section which is taking concrete i mean which is taking compression now we'll be talking about the moment of inertia of this particular part now see if i draw a suppose a uh, neutral axis only for this transform section steel section right or i mean steel area so for this particular area if we want to find out the moment of inertia about the neutral axis of the section it will be very minimum okay it will be very minimum so moment of inertia of this section individually is ignored why ignored because it is very this very small value it will come if you compare if you find out the moment of inertia of this particular uh, transform steel area uh, with respect to the neutral axis of the section right okay so in this case we will uh, i mean ignore the moment of inertia individually for this particular area but but again it is not at the neutral axis of the section so we need to use that uh, what we need to area into h square we need to do so what is this h what is this h h is nothing but this one now d minus x i mean the if it's the centroid of this area it is nothing but my effective uh, i mean effective depth total if you find so if you find from here it is nothing but my effective depth d so this area from the neutral axis it will the distance will be d minus x correct so this area i would write with moment of inertia of transformed steel or a i mean reinforcement area about and then neutral axis plus this is ignored okay this is ignored this is not there plus area what is the area so area is nothing but my uh, i mean reinforcement area which is transformed area of reinforcement mst so i would write it as m a s t a s t here it is nothing but m a s t correct so m a s t multiplied by how much this d minus x Square. okay so finally what we are getting finally what we are getting correct moment of inertia icr equal to if you see if we solve this we will get bx cube by 3 correct plus here this is ignored so m into ast which is the transformed area of steel multiplied by d minus x square x also we know which is nothing but my which is nothing but my uh, neutral axis depth so this is my correct moment of inertia 
right so now now if you just see here to find out the AFST we needed the crack moment of inertia which we can find out from this particular derivation uh, modular ratio we know moment serviceability moment we can find out from the analysis and effective depth also we know after providing the reinforcement obviously neutral axis depth also we calculated here right we calculated here the neutral axis depth correct so we got the neutral axis depth so fst is completed this is one by one now we will go fst is finished now we will go to uh, what we needed fst and x so this is solved now we need uh, epsilon m equal to epsilon 1 minus this value right so this value all the values we have so capital d width of the section neutral axis depth just now we have found out ast which is provided uh, you can say modulus of elasticity of steel we know 2 into 10 power 5 and 3 is just a i mean 1 by 3 is a uh, 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 value in newton power square actually this one so and epsilon 1 just now we actually we found out here if you see at the top where it is yeah epsilon 1 fst by yes fst also we solved right and all these values so fst also we got it here correctly right so we got epsilon 1 we got this value so this epsilon m is calculated so from the crack width formula if you see what are the things left epsilon m we already found right this d value is we know now what is this uh, okay neutral axis depth also we calculated c minimum and acr okay so now let us let us draw a section again okay this is my section these are my reinforcement okay this is my section these are my reinforcement here i have the correct like this suppose right t minimum is nothing but the cover to the main reinforcement this one you can write it so minimum cover so we'll just write it as c just cover to the reinforcement that you have provided okay this is my c or you can say this is in terms of c minimum whatever min reinfo i mean cover you are going to provide you just have to write it here okay c minimum fine now what is this acr acr is nothing but from the face of the crack the distance of the face of the bar from the face of the crack so this is nothing but my a c r this is nothing but my acr what we assume that the cracks are supposed to happen in between the two bars that we are providing okay so so if suppose this is if the diameter of the bar i will i will just draw like this diameter in any direction it will be the same right so if this one is phi okay diameter of the bar or i would write it here this is my phi correct okay so and the spacing between these bars spacing equal to s if we write okay so how much it will be we are considering it is happening at the in between two bars so it is s by 2 it is s by 2 correct now if we want to find out this acr suppose from the face of this crack the center of this bar it is suppose consider let us consider it is as x dash or whatever maybe let us consider a dash okay let us consider a dash so if i just write now uh, 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 do we know this this height do we know this height this height we know this height this height the effective uh de, i mean the effective cover of the to the bar so it will be c plus i would just write effective 
cover d c we write right so effective cover to the bar is equal to c plus 5 by 2 correct c plus 5 by 2 it is nothing but the effective cover effective cover to the main bar and c is nothing but the i mean the cover to the bar i mean the clear cover to the bar correct so now if we calculate this is c this height it is a triangle if you can calculate so i just write a c r equal to a dash minus c a dash it is up to the center of the bar so half of the bar dia we need to i mean deduct from this 5 by 2 correct now how to find this a bar so we can just use this similar triangle i'm sorry not similar triangle uh, i mean right angle triangle so suppose this is the bar dia here we have the crack so we have found formulated something like this okay so this is nothing but my dc effective cover this distance what we calculated it is nothing but my a dash okay and this distance already we have calculated as s by 2 i mean we have uh, written as s by 2 from the center of the bar correct so from here if we find out the hypotenuse how how much how it will be this hypotenuse a bar will be root under root under dc square i mean the effective cover square plus s by 2 square okay minus 5 by 2 for this acr so we know acr is equal to dc square plus s by 2 square minus 5 by 2 so this is my acr which is nothing but the distance of the uh, i mean face of the i mean distance between the face of the crack from the uh, i mean uh, the face of the bar okay so this is my acr so we got acr we got c minima which is nothing but the clear cover to the main reinforcement okay so all the inputs we now have we have c we have acr okay we have uh, epsilon m now we can easily find out the wcr which is the width of crack width of crack in any case in any case if the epsilon 2 value which is we found out here this value this is nothing but my epsilon 2 right this one you can see if any case this epsilon 2 is greater than epsilon 1 okay in this case you will understand that your section is not cracked okay if it is greater than epsilon 1 then you will understand that your section is not cracked right one more thing when you are finding out the fst which is the ten i mean tensile stress in steel you need to make sure that this is not crossing the limiting value or permissible uh, stress limit as per the working stress i mean permissible working stress it is not crossing the permissible work working stress okay so i will just write it here it should not it should not cross the permissible working stress okay fine so permissible stress value you will get in table number 22 i guess and this modulus i mean uh, sorry which one uh, let me just see table number 21 is giving permissible stresses in concrete i mean the sigma cbc values right permissible 22 is giving yeah permissible stresses in steel reinforcement and if you see for the hysd bars suppose the grade 500 the permissible stress in direct tension and flexural tension shall be 0.55 fy so what i'm saying this total process is the is for the crack width analysis when the member is subjected to bending that means the tension is coming due to the bending if there is a direct uh, i mean tension then this method will not be applicable okay so this is the methodology now if you see the code if you see the code for uh, i mean this it is very poor to understand from the code so if you just see here just this formula omega uh, sorry uh, epsilon m epsilon 1 this value y 
this they have written something but there is no much explanation is given okay so you can read these things from here but what will happen you will not get clarity how to find out the things how these are coming so here it is you can see i have referred the book by uh, i mean a professor pillai and menon okay so the rcc design book you can also refer it's a very but there also there are different methods given and and it is a i mean it is scattered so what i have done i have made it uh, for you in a, in one location so you can watch this lecture and you can directly from, do from here okay you can read the book also but it will be a scattered manner different different methods are given okay so you just have to have to give some time to understand this right so if you read the book and again you refer this lecture it will be very easy for you to understand even uh, you can easily understand from from the lecture also I, I feel so if you have any doubt regarding this you can always write me in the uh, comment i will try to uh, i mean discuss regarding this so thank you